Hey, 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 time for another out of this world story from our space. And today we have something that we've never done before on our channel. Stories from the family drama genre. Well, it's something that we really hope you like, and please let us know in the comments section if you want more of this. First up, parents prank daughter and punish her when she gets upset. Okay, this is gonna kind of be a rant, but a little context first. My dad has promised my older sister, 16, a car for a little under a year now, and my dad has had the money to. I know this because he bought a Harley, a motorcycle that averages $20,000, and a four-wheeler. And today, at the beginning of school, my dad messaged her saying he got her a BMW. So my sister was happy and her friends were happy for her. But when we got home today, she found a toy BMW, the ones the little kids drive, and she was of course upset. And when she showed she was upset and cussed, our mom took away her phone. It also doesn't help that one of her closest friends is telling her, it's your size, and laughing at her. She is five foot tall on the dot. And when my dad got home, he threatened her by saying he would get her fired and get her removed from robotics, which would get rid of her scholarship. All right, time for some comments. Fancy Introduction 60 says, you clearly have an a-hole for a dad. So sorry this happened. The OP's response, yeah, both of my parents are very religious and very conservative, so they also think masks don't work and the vaccine is bad. Dogs Raising Cats says, they'll think their pranks are hilarious when they're old and their daughter and her family never visit or return their calls. And a last comment before moving on from Archer Go. Tell your sis to play a prank on them. Basically, your sister will tell your parents that she has bought a house for them out of love and gratitude for all they have done for her, and then blindfold them and take them to a desert, or any other uninhabited or secluded spot. And once there, leave them and go away. When they open their blindfolds, all they should see is a small house model with a note saying, enjoy. Next story. My family forced me to eat crab despite having an allergy to seafood. My family has hit a new low. They forced me to eat crab last night despite having an allergy to seafood, both fish and crustaceans, that they think is fake. But as the one that experienced it firsthand, I can assure you it's not. This entire thing started when my father was craving crab, which to me was no problem, but then it was forced on the entire table that night. My prior experience with the allergy was from McDonald's filet of fish or similar, that caused my throat to tighten, still allowing air to pass. After approximately a half hour, along with a slight headache and slight nausea. The same thing happened last night, but they still don't respect the allergy. When I noticed I am not comfortable eating crab for dinner, but we'd eat the other offerings, they told me, shut up and eat the crab, we're trying it too. The catch, they don't have the fish allergies and think that testing my sister who came back clean would mean that I'm not allergic. I was in a world of discomfort last night and I am convinced that it was an allergy despite their pushback. I know to avoid all shellfish now, but I'm worried they will force me to eat lobster or something and not have the fish separated at the restaurants. My friends know my allergy and don't force anything on me. Thankfully, and college dining has allergy friendly venues with the stickers to say, don't eat this if you're allergic to X. What should I do if this arises again? I plan to vacate the house this week, but unfortunately my parents will never learn it seems. Checking in with the comments, our first one comes from Loose Dirt Brick. You just have to not eat at all when they pull that garbage. I carry protein bars in my purse so I can still eat something if I find myself stuck with a bunch of inconsiderate ignoramuses. That's a good idea. Generally at school where I live with my friends who have my back, I have food in my room, but they wouldn't let me up if I didn't eat it. Just two bites, 15 minutes apart, they said. Another comment comes from Biking Ames. Get diagnosed by an allergist. Get an EpiPen prescription if necessary. Learn how to administer it to yourself. The more exposure you have, the more likely this will develop into anaphylaxis, which is life-threatening. Throat tightening is concerning. My brother is anaphylactic to macadamia nuts and iffy with shellfish, so he avoids all shellfish. He's had multiple brushes with death thanks to homemade macadamia nut desserts. One more comment before moving on. Duke Guinea Pig says, all right, I'm not a doctor, but in my experience, people who are allergic to both regular fish and shellfish tend toward the deadly end of the spectrum. Go see a doctor. Don't let your parents poison you. Also, it's possible that this is an iodine allergy, and you need to be aware of that because it's used in medicines. 
All right, let's head up another story. Parents who can't even control their emotions or anger should not be parents at all. We all know that toddlers' kids make a fuss and throw a tantrum all the time because they don't know how to handle emotions, because they can't understand it yet. So parents need to help the kid understand how to handle the emotion. But this is all understandable for a toddler. Meanwhile, we have adults here that are around 40 years old whining and throwing tantrums like a baby. My mom literally threw a dessert on the table because she doesn't know where hers is. She then proceeded to shout at my 13-year-old sister to figure out what dessert is hers, then called her stupid. My biggest fear is turning out like her. With the pandemic and all the time spent at home, it's dangerously easy for me to catch her personality. Although I'm not racist, sexist, homophobic, and all out problematic like her, I'm afraid I'll catch her anger management problems. I've been living with her for 17 years and I'm so afraid I'll be like her. They say the older you get, the more you become like your parents. Well, in my case, I hope that doesn't happen. When my mom gets angry, it gets to the point where she'll throw us the most insulting insults there is on the planet and even tell us to die and that she would be so much happier if we weren't in her life. She'd even start pulling our hair and slapping us. I'm 17 and I got so used to it that it doesn't do anything to me anymore. But for a 13 year old's mind, I swear if our, all of us in this community, parents did to strangers what they do to us, they'll end up in jail, but they get away with it because they're our parents. My wish for everyone in this subreddit is that we'll finally be able to be free and live without toxicity around us. First response coming from Confident Bridge 9811 Get yourself into therapy as soon as you can if you want to avoid becoming her. Get the tools you need to be a better person. The OP responds, I wish it was that easy. Therapists here in my country are very rare. That's why I want to take psychology to help people that experience the same as me. An untitled Redditor 06 says, My dad, when he's angry, upset, or in pain, shouts and scares us. I forget to turn off the lights in my room and I got called a failure. And when he's pissed off enough, he hits us. Man, can't wait for college. OP's response, man, that sucks. Can't wait for college too, but I still have two years of high school left because I stopped for a year because of the pandemic, so I have to endure for more years. The stories just keep on coming day. Next up, she wore bright yellow, the only one color brighter than white wedding dress on my wedding day. My ex-mother-in-law from the start didn't want me to marry her son. When I asked her for her blessing, she said she wouldn't give it, that we were too young. Fair point, we were both 20. We went ahead and started to plan anyway. He said he could warm her up to the idea. We had an engagement party and mother-in-law insisted on getting the cake for the party. She didn't like me, so I was confused. I was trying hard to change that though and really wanted her to accept me. The cake arrives. She takes it and hides it to surprise us in the middle of the festivities. She brings it out once the party is rolling, opens the lid in front of everyone with a congratulations whoopla. I looked down in front of everyone. She had had it decorated with our names. She spelt mine one wrong. I confronted her after and asked her why she did that. Her reasoning was that it was too much effort to find out how my name was spelled. I was planning the wedding and she was moaning to my fiance about not being involved in the decisions. She didn't even approve of the wedding, so I never asked her for help. I thought she was hard against it. So one day, she corners me in the kitchen and demands I put her daughter in the wedding. I only had one bridesmaid and one flower girl to keep the costs down, as my parents were paying for everything. She didn't offer a dime. I felt trapped, so agreed and had to pay for everything myself, fabric, seamstress, and accessories. Next came the wedding day. I turned up to the ceremony, and as I walked down the aisle to my groom, there she was, standing so close to the back of the groom, her son, that the best man was shoved out of the way. Her wearing the brightest yellow frilly long gown I had ever seen, holding a bouquet of flowers. Yellow like the color they use for high visibility vests for a reason. I also noticed my own oldest sister and niece in white gowns and couldn't believe my eyes. My entitled sister is another whole story. I'm not sure where to post that can of worms, but anyway, back to the dragon-in-law. Oh, I mean mother-in-law. She spends the entire day and night at our wedding telling all the people we hired for the event what to do and how to do it, as if she's paying the bill and sulking when no one paid her attention, demanding, I'm the mother of the groom, so... Insert demand. There were a couple of days in between the wedding and our honeymoon. Mother-in-law had said, I'll help by paying for your honeymoon as a gift for your wedding. The day comes for us to leave on our honeymoon. Last minute, she informs us that she had told all my husband's aunties, her sisters, husbands, and family not to give us anything as she would be covering it. Then tells us our wedding gift is money. 
but it's in the form of wiping a debt of $150 that my ex-husband had borrowed off her before we had met. So consequently, we got nothing from his entire side of the family for the wedding. To top it all off, a few years later when I fell pregnant with our first son, I had to stop pillioning with my husband on the back of his motorbike for the safety of the baby. She bought me a black t-shirt that said, I'm the bitch that's fallen off the back. When she gave it to me, she said, I got this for you to wear on the bike, but when son comes to visit me, you can't come anymore. Oh, what a shame. By the way, I am divorced from this guy and have zero contact with his mother now. Let me know if you want part two of my oldest sister who wore white to my wedding and stole my sister's boyfriend. Next up, entitled stepmom stole my prescription pain medication. She took five pills a day. This story takes place in the mid 2000s when I was in high school, 15, 16 years old. I was in a lot of after school activities such as band. I played the flute and piccolo and cheerleading. These activities required me to use my hands a lot, but unfortunately I had this horrible seed wart on my finger that was pretty massive in size and it started to cause me a great amount of pain while playing my instrument and writing. I had tried a number of different things to try removing the wart at home, such as freezing it, but these attempts were unsuccessful. So after years of this, I decided to schedule an appointment with my family general practitioner to surgically remove the wart. The surgery went well, wart removed and fingers stitched up. So my general practitioner had prescribed me some pain medication, hydrocodone, 30 pills to be exact, as the surgery had left a huge hole on the side of my finger. This medicine was supposed to last for the next few weeks till the follow-up appointment to have the stitches removed. I went home after the surgery, took one pill and went to bed. The next day, I took a pill that morning and that evening. So a total of 27 pills should be remaining. I had skipped the next few days, five days, because I did not want to go to school or band practice on hydros, but the pain got too great on day five. I had to take one. So I went to the medicine cabinet to take one of my painkillers when I noticed there were only four pills left. I thought this was strange as no one in the house needs to take this medication, nor was I informed someone will take it. So I went to ask my dad if he had taken any of my medicine, to which he replied with a puzzled, no. After confirming with him, I went to ask the estranged stepmom if she had taken my prescription pain medicine, and of course, she confirmed it was her. She had claimed she needed to take some of my pain medicine because she had a headache. I was so angry as she just stole my pain medication. 23 pills in 5 days, while I'm sitting here with a massive hole in my finger. Of course, she starts to play the victim card, as she can clearly see I am angry at her and not accepting her excuses. I ran up to my dad to tell him what she is doing with my pain medication, only for him to say, Hey, you know you shouldn't do that. It was at this point I knew I better keep all my medications away from her. I ended up moving out shortly after graduating high school and starting college. It wasn't until after I started college that I realized she had cashed out my college fund a long time ago, but that is a story for another time. First comment comes from Bebop420. 23 in 5 days? Okay, so I'm a freaking pothead. Suffering from emotional trauma, depression, and addictive personality, and a whole lot of other crap. I also enjoy taking painkillers. I get prescribed them all the time. They're fun and help a lot. Even I think 23 in 5 days, that's almost 5 a freaking day, is an insane amount. Is your stepmom okay? Does she need to see a therapist? Cause seriously, that's crazy. I'm sorry, if I was your stepdad, I'd have only stolen one or two, three max. Next comment comes from Mental Dragonfruit35. Is your stepmother my mother? Because wow, same. She stole my grandma's meds while she was home in hospice dying of cancer. Even stealing the college fund was the same. My mother decided she needed a new Harley Davidson motorcycle more than I needed an education. So she forged my signature and stole the money. I still got my college education out of spite. I wasn't going to allow her to rob me of the future I saw for myself. I'm still paying for the loans, but I did it. Living well was my best revenge. One more comment from Tuna Tofu. That is felony drug possession she's got going on there. That's a police report and a trip to rehab. Nobody takes that much med without a prescription unless they are an addict. Okay, last story is an interesting one. It's from Doth Taraki, posted in Mother-in-Law's from Hella. She tried to sell her daughter to a politician for reputation. I feel a bit bad for posting this. She's a widow and apparently she was such an all-out mom for my wife since childhood, industrious, taking risks, never spoiling her two kids, my wife and her younger brother of six years. When I first met her, back when my wife and I were still dating, 
long distance relationship for seven years. She was solid. Look, I just need to see your diploma before I allow you to date my daughter. Respect. Absolute salute. Her daughter was two years ahead of me in college, already graduated as a nurse, and has a bright future. Then, when we broke up, mother-in-law saw to it to introduce her daughter to the most influential people in their place. Rich young men, soldiers, officers. Depressed old me was struggling, but I respected everything. That's normal for parents to do. Now, it's important to note that while we were still dating in college, my wife would tell me stories about her mom dating men in uniform, who had families. My wife confronted her mom about it, but mother-in-law just said it's her life and everything she was doing was for her kids to succeed in life. Even when we broke up, I was angry with my ex back then for listening to her mom and joining the state pageant. She learned a lot about how to be a bitch from her mom, how to converse with dirty people and play along with their jokes. My ex started wearing skimpy clothes, hung around with politicians' sons trying to win her over. She never let anyone date her and she was open to courtships, but she never dated with them. I was her first and she was determined to get back to me after I graduated college. When her mom found out that she was rejecting suitors left and right and was still contacting me, she became more aggressive. My ex won the state pageant, instant celebrity in their place, more suitors, young and old. Her mom welcomed them all in their house. She doesn't care if a pig was courting as long as they have money. My ex was enjoying the spotlight, but she was starting to get anxious because her mom was endorsing her to the politicians themselves, not their sons. Dirty old men who kept bombarding them with, if it weren't for me, you would have never won the pageant. I also hold the key to your position in the hospital. I can make them kick you out if I want. When my ex realized what was going on, she made a quick getaway and rode the bus to my town. My ex found a job near my place. I was a fresh grad and started working too. We then got back together. She was scared to go back home. Apparently, many suitors were getting angry because her mom promised her to them. A rumor was spread by the governor that he slept with my girlfriend. My girlfriend told me that her mom slept with that same governor when she was younger to secure her work in the hospital. Same governor would send my girlfriend texts on what room number he's staying in the hotel, and her mom would demand my girlfriend to go as gratitude. I was livid. My girlfriend was scared. Even I doubted her at first, considering that the rumors were so widespread already. A politician's son also spread a rumor that he slept with her. My girlfriend said the only time she talked to the guy was when she needed a ride home because her mom would not pick her up late at night. It was set up. Her mom wanted her daughter to screw around like her and get rich in doing so. This was her dream for her daughter. My girlfriend got promoted within a year and was lent a company car. I was jumping from job to job due to my depression. After a year of staying in the tiny apartment, we decided to get married. I know, we rushed it. But my wife was scared like crazy and I wanted to protect her. We got married to the dismay of a thousand people including our families. Then my wife got fired. She said she has more chances of getting a job than I did. True, but we have to return to her hometown and face all the stress head on. Her mom would tell all the relatives that she offered us to stay in her house. We did for a bit and it was hell for me. I was expected to clean everything in her house. Dishes, floor, dogs. She does not have a running faucet, so I would fetch water with a hose and fill all her buckets. Now her son. Her son was spoiled as F. I have never believed such idiocracy and irresponsibility and uselessness could exist in such a big young adult. But there his son was. After witnessing it firsthand, how mother-in-law would cheat with a guy to sustain her son's BS hobbies and buy him everything he wants, me and my wife bailed out. We rented a small place, tried to return to a normal life. My wife was healing, then she got pregnant. I don't know why, but she suddenly said she wanted to live with her mom again when the baby came out. I disagreed, but when she gave birth, she was desperate for a mother figure to assist her. So here I am now, back in their house again. Mother-in-law is not wanted by father-in-law's family, so when my baby arrived, she would use my son as a passage to get accepted again. She would use my son to gain favor in places she wants to go, saying she's planning a party for my son. People would give her discounts in resorts and hotels. Then she'd go out with her son, leaving me and my wife and my baby at home, with the reason that the baby might get COVID if we went out with them. I try not to blame my wife for bringing us back to square one, but it's my fault for not being able to afford another new place on our own. My work is minimum wage and I don't want to leave my son in his grandma's care, so I ask my wife to stay at home and watch over him while I work. Mother-in-law would always see to it to comment on how dirty and messy her house is. My mom would always tell us, as a family, that my baby niece's mess is always welcome in her house. Scattered toys and glue that holds the family together. Well, this is not family. Every day I ache to get out. My wife is also showing signs of, this is fine, let's just stay here and wait it out. Things will get better. 
This is after mother-in-law called her a freeloader. We're not. We eat separate food from them. We share in the electric and water bills. As I write this, I still wonder what the F I was thinking, agreeing to come back here. Thanks for the rant, Reddit. And one quick comment from Chris Anya, 83. OMG, you need to leave. I'm sorry your wife is in the FOG. FOG stands for fear, obligation, and guilt. 